would it be the right hemispheric way of doing things or, or perceiving things that is better at relaxing or tolerating uncertainty? Well, it certainly is. Um, I, I don't. Before we go any further, I don't want to uh, anybody to think that I'm adopting a sort of position where um, the left hemisphere is always wrong. It only knows a part of the picture, but the part it may still be valuable. And so it, we don't just need a right hemisphere, we need a left hemisphere. And if you think about it in life, um, it's no good being so uncertain and so willing to entertain all possibilities and so alive to all the ambivalences and ambiguities mm -hmm. that you simply can't do anything. <laughs> so we need to have a part of us that is prepared to say, I need a certainty here and I'm going to take it. And that would be the left hemisphere. So the left hemisphere is, in a whole lot of ways, demonstrably, more cut and dried, more clear cut. The right hemisphere tends to see both sides of a story and to see that something else might be true that is not included here. V.S. Ramachandran, very well-known neuroscientist, calls the right hemisphere the devil's advocate because it's the one that is saying, well, yes, but, which I think is such an important thing to be saying. And, and, you know, when we bring these two things together, we need both certainty and uncertainty, even if in the end nothing can be certain. So the right hemisphere is the one that has the bigger truth, but there is a smaller truth that we also need to in encompass. And this brings me to an important point about the dynamics between the hemispheres, that if you like, the left hemisphere tends to be either or, the right hemisphere tends to be both and, but about this relationship, the left hemisphere tends to be either or about it. So it thinks either it's me or it's the right hemisphere. Whereas the right hemisphere is able to get, go, we need both either or and both and, not either either right. or, or both and. So it's more all encompassing. It's more all encompassing <clears throat> and it embraces its own opposite. Mm. And that is so important because the more you look at things, uh, in many areas of life, in any area of life, um, from physics to everyday life in the home and at work, opposites are often seen to come together. And I mean, this is an ancient observation that opposites coincide. And it's a, a core observation in uh, Oriental wisdom literature and in the mystical literature of the West. And I think it's a very deep truth that when you lose sight of that, things start to seem linear, that this is just good over here and that is just bad over there. So we obviously need none of that and more and more of this. The mistake was to identify anything as always good or always bad. You know, quite recently, um, former President Obama said, um, life is messy, it's full of ambiguities. And he was really hitting back at the kind of fashionable social justice warrior view that certain things are just right and certain people are just right. And he's pointing out that really all people are a great mix of good and bad and that points of view are too. And it's such a simple point really, but in it is such a lot of wisdom that we've lost.